Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the WaveShare WS USB to Serial PC installation. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. The link's been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there'll be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There'll be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So we will be installing an industrial USB to RS-485 converter on our computer. The WaveShare USB to serial port is a two-wire USB to RS-485 serial communication adapter for RS-485 use. It does not require an external power supply or complicated configuration. Now we will be unboxing and installing the driver for the USB to serial converter and connecting it to our computer. Node Red will be used to communicate Modbus RS-485 protocol or Modbus RTU to a solo process temperature controller. So the first thing we will do is unbox our WWS USB to serial converter. And what you will notice is that it comes in a prepackaged box. We'll open that up. And inside, you will see that we have our actual unit itself. It comes in an anti-static anti -static bag, plus we have a screwdriver and an ex expansion cable. And that expansion cable can be used so that we don't have to have um, a, a really tight fit because the converter is slightly bigger than usual on this module. So there's the actual unit itself. So that's my USB type A plug USB for the computer side and screw terminals for the RS-485 connections. Then there's my expansion cable, so I can fit that right in next to uh, all my other USB slots, and it comes standard with the screwdriver. Now, this actually has an FT32RL chip inside, and it features embedded protection circuits such as lightning proof, resettable fuses, ESD or electrostatic discharge protection, and TVS or transient voltage surge suppressor. Um, all these features are packed within that small same size and you can see that my terminal strip just unplugs. So first thing we'll do next is what we'll do is once we have that installed or, or unboxed we will go over to the WaveShare website and where we can download our driver for this unit. Now don't plug in that unit yet. And what we do is we download this driver right here and it will download our communication driver here. Then we right click and we will extract all that information. So there is our extracted information. Now the, now the next thing we have to do is determine, we either do this uh, DPINST-AMD64, which is a 64-bit computer application, or we use the x86, which is the 32-bit application. So we go to our system and on our computer. And in the settings, what you'll notice is that we have, in our case here, a 64-bit. So because we have a 64-bit, we will be using this one right here, which is dpinst-amd64.exe. So we double click it to start our installation file. Here we go. And then we hit next. We have to accept the licensing agreement. Hit next. Then it says we're ready to use. Everything's com uh, complete. So we just hit finish. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can actually plug in our um, converter into our USB drive. So when we plug that in, it loads up those drivers and then we go to our device manager on our computer and under our COM ports, you will actually see our COM port setting, which is USB serial port number five. Right clicking on it, we can go to properties and under properties, you can see here that my device is working correctly. My port settings are currently set up the default here. Our driver, 
and any other details that we have or events. So we now have our driver installed. Now let's take a look at actual application. And what we'll do first is take a look at uh, our hardware that we have here. And our hardware, what you'll notice is that we have our wave share USB to RS-45. And you notice that we have the three lights on here. We have the power light, so we actually are plugged in. As we can see that we have our um, COM port assigned. We have a transmit and receive light. And we have our A and B uh, communication going back to our solo process temperature controller, which is the model 4896. We have a present value and a set value on our process temperature controller. And we have a RS-485 communication link from our adapter over to the temperature controller. So the plus goes on plus, negative goes on negative. And we set the, um, the communication parameters to the same as what we would in our software. And they are uh, 9600 baud we're currently uh, communicating at. So let's take a look at Node Red, and here is my actual program. So we have a timestamp here, and a timestamp just just used for injection or timing the sequence of which I want to communicate. Then we have a function node, and under the function node, you can see that we want to um, read multiple registers, which is the function code three. Our unit ID is set up for number one on our solo process temperature, that's what we want to read from. Then we have an address of 4096 and we're going to read two. So that's giving me, give, going to give me my present value and set value returned in one statement. Then we use the Modbus Flex Scatter and we are bringing that into our server called Modbus RTU. And we're going to turn on the optionals, which is going to be show me activity and show errors. Going back to settings, we will look at the Modbus RTU. And if we look at the edit this, you will see that we've now selected the um, serial port, COM number five. We have set the um, serial type, RTU buffered, our baud rate 9600, data bits eight, stop bits one, parity even, which matches my solo process temperature controller. Then we have our delays and timeouts that we can set separately. So that is our server um, selection. So remember that when we're talking Modbus, we have masters, which is what the computer is, to the um, slave, which is what the solo process temperature controller is, or another way of saying that is a client, which is the computer, to the server, which is the um, process temperature controller. Then we display the information using Modbus response, and then we have our message payload that actually displays it into our um, debug mode here. So if I were to uh, try this out, and we'll hit the inject. What you will see is that, um, first of all, we got an error. It's probably just opening it up. We'll hit that again. And there's our data. And you can tell by when I highlighted it here. So probably my bot bus on my first time just timed out because it never opened the port correctly. Now I open the port and then we have our data. Here we go. And we have 229 and 145 representing uh, 22.9 and 14.5. The decimal point is just understood. The buffer shows you the individual bytes of information that is coming back. So what we can do now is uh, we will automatically put this on a time. And we, will can, we can say that we want an interval and we can do one second. And then we'll deploy that. So now what you'll see is that my information is being updated every one second and we're getting that data coming back. 
and we can look at that data. Again, my two buffered, my information here. And if I were to change that by just hitting and holding the um, probe, you'll see that my temperature will start rising. And when the temperature starts rising, what we'll do is take a look at that data. And, and you can see that the, the data has, or the values have changed. And you can see them changing right up here on our Modbus uh, uh, response. So if we want to test out the actual speed, we can go 0.1 second. So 10 times a second. And what we'll do is just clear this and you can see that it fills up the buffer quite quickly. And we can actually go even further than that to test the speed. And let's go 0 0.01 or 100 times a second. And you can continue doing this until you actually receive a lot of the errors. So we have 100 times of reading a second that we're doing on our solo process temperature controller. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.